Hello and welcome to the Premier Football Podcast. This is Joe's Corner, episode three. It's the time of the week where we feature a current topic in the footballing world. As I'm a massive Arsenal fan, the first two pieces were on um, were on Arsenal, so it'll be a breath of fresh air that we're that we're looking at something outside of of Arsenal Football Club for a change, particularly for me, um, because there's not much good to talk about Arsenal at the moment, and uh, it's not enjoyable to. To, to, to discuss. This is the first piece I've had to do a bit of research for with Arsenal. It's pretty much just venting frustration and talking off the top of my head. But today we're going to talk about football in the United States of America. Some people might call it soccer. Here on the Premier Football Podcast, we vehemently call it football. So we'll be discussing football in the United States. It's not the first country that you think of that comes to mind when when you hear the word football. With the word soccer, yes, definitely for obvious reasons, but with football it's it, it's not. And nevertheless, it's a, it's an extremely popular po- sport in the United States. The country has fared reasonably well uh, in an international level, they've won six Gold Cups, second only to Mexico's 11. But you could argue that it's very much a two-team um, competition. Like outside of that, I think Costa Rica is the next uh, next most successful team with, with three wins. And even Canada will be placing in the top five. And they're, they're not exactly renowned for their football, are they? In addition to that, the US um, have pretty much been a fixture in the World Cup since the 1990 World Cup, barring uh, the last World Cup in Russia in 2018 where they failed to qualify. Their highest place finish in the World Cup is third. That came way back in 1930. And their highest place in the modern era is, um, or was rather, uh, a place in the quarterfinals in 2002. They are, of course, very famous for um, hosting the World Cup in 94, USA 94. Um, and for me, the my, my earliest footballing memories of the of, of the US were of um, that pretty historic uh, shirt from the '94 World Cup, the red the red and white. Uh, Alexi Lalas's uh, curly red hair. He was their one of their centre backs back then, who was very very noticeable because of his haircut. And of course, the infamous incident with Diana Ross, where she went to take a penalty kick, the goal was split in half. And of course, she scuffed the ball, and it didn't even didn't even hit the back of the net. Since then, the U.S. have come on leaps and bounds in terms of football. And uh, just uh, this January, starlet Christian Pulisic was transferred to Chelsea from Borussia Dortmund for round about sixty million pounds, which is seventy seventy five million dollars, something like that, which um, is the highest fee ever paid for a player from the United States. Pulisic is a, is, is a generational talent. Um, and although we've had s- s- reasonably high profile players from the United States play in the, in the Premier League before, you think of the likes of Tim Harrod for Manchester United, um, Landon Donovan for, um, for Everton, are probably the two, the two most high profile players to have played. The two most successful, um, maybe on, on, on the a level below, the likes of Brian McBride for Fulham, Casey Keller for Tottenham, um, and Josie Altidore for Sunderland. Although his his, his time in England did not go to plan, um, but Pulisic Pulisic breaks that mold. I, I know that Donovan was a was a very 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 successful player in terms of what he achieved internationally, and he he played for Bayern Munich. He did great things with LA Galaxy, um, but Pulisic uh, has. I think it's clear that he has more potential than than Donovan and whether he'll go on to fulfill his true potential remains to be seen but my god he's had a fantastic start to life in the in the Premier League with five goals in in nine games uh, for Chelsea and all of those five goals coming in his last three starts which is fantastic for him and if he can carry that on which I think is more than likely under Frank Lampard and with with the other with the cop of Play, crop of players that he has there at the moment, then he's in a in, he's he's really in the perfect place, isn't he? And um, I wouldn't be surprised to see if Pulisic goes on to achieve great things in the game. And I don't think that he is going to be the first of this this mold of of, of American player. I think that this is just the start, and that uh, football in the United States is going to get a whole lot bigger, and that we're going to come a whole lot stronger. 
Stepping on a nice pint of Guinness. We should probably be sponsored by Guinness at this uh, at this stage, given how much we um, <laughs> given how given given our tendency to to, to drink a, a can of Guinness during our shows. The MLS Major League Soccer is, of course, the um, the the main uh, professional footballing competition in 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 the United States of America. It took off rather slowly in the in in the in the nineteen nineties. Um, and by the year 2000, it was averaging, in terms of attendance, around 12, 13,000 people a game. Fast forward to 2016, and that's over 20,000. So it's gone up by about 60% in, in, in 15 years' time. Not only that, in terms of, of revenue and how, how valuable teams are, are, are thought to be, when the, when the MLS was first introduced, most teams were, were valued um, under $100 million. And now the average is $240 million. To put that in, in perspective with, with Premier League clubs, that would see, that would be comparable to a, a, a bottom, a lower, ta lower Premier League table side. Around about fifteenth, sixteenth, seventeenth, uh, something like that. Even obviously, they're they're valued over a billion, billion, billion dollars now. But Liverpool, when they were bought by um, by Fenway Sports, were 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 bought for just about three hundred million dollars or three hundred million pounds, if I'm not mistaken. So to put that in perspective, a, a huge club like Liverpool were valued at three hundred. Um, million dollars in in 2011 i think it was when they were taken over and the mls clubs are are, are averaging um 240 million dollars it's it's a huge increase of money and a lot of this you you have to say is down to the likes of david beckham in previous years um before the mls when there was a different competition i think it was the nals um in the 1970s and 80s we had the likes of pele obviously arguably the greatest player to ever play the game, uh, playing for the New York Cosmos. George Best played over there. Gerd Müller, the legendary German striker, played in, in, in the US, and, and so did Franz Beckenbauer. Um, so there's, there's always been a history of, um, of top players going to, to play uh, the, their twilight years in, in, in the United States. But with Beckham, it got taken to another level. Beckham was 30 two when he moved to LA Galaxy in, in the summer of 2007 and although you could think 32 that's that's past their prime Beckham was never a player who relied on his pace he, he relies on his on his passing his vision and his work rate and the fact that he came back to, to, to Europe three times twice with AC Milan and then the third time of course with Paris Saint-Germain and excelled each of those times is a testament to the fact that he was by no means finished when he went to the United States. It was a slightly controversial move at the time because he obviously had so much left to give. He'd finished the season very strongly with Real Madrid, but then he moved to the States and that just changed the complexion of, of, of the game in, in the US forever, as far as, as far as I'm concerned. Since then, we've seen players like Robbie Keane, who for, for us in Ireland is a an absolute legend of the game. Um, he would be considered a Premier League legend for certainly for Tottenham, I'm I'm sure, and uh, a very very good player. He went over and he absolutely owned the MLS. He was he was he was really really good for Galaxy and won a, won a couple of, of of MLS cups with them. And since then, we've seen players like uh, David Villa, Didier Drogba, Thierry Henry. And uh, of course, Latan Ibrahimovic, who's playing playing for LA Galaxy now, go over and 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 spend some of their final years playing it playing in the United States in the MLS. What we haven't seen, which which I think will be the the, the an even greater turning point, is it, if and when a player in their prime goes from Europe to play in the United States. Will we see that? Uh, obviously, the 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 sport is progressing hugely in America at the moment but and 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 as a purpose of this video I, b I believe that it will continue to do so but I'd be very interested to see if we will if we will see that in the future a player going from Europe to the to the US in in their prime I mean it's a very attractive proposition America um certainly in terms of the, of a city like Los Angeles and what it can offer um a football player a global football star is, is huge it's you know the the city of, of of entertainment it's a really 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 amazing place and it's a very attractive place. it's very sunny very nice place to live 
has everything that you could possibly want to do. Um, you get paid an absolute fortune as a designated player over there. So there's really, there are a lot of benefits. I, I suppose the only downside is the fact that you're not going to be playing Champions League football. And at the moment, the standard is not quite as as competitive as the um, the Premier League. But it's getting there. It certainly is. It's getting there. It's really, really, really improving. And you see a lot more fans from the the United Kingdom, probably from other parts of Europe, who are, who are, who are um, starting to follow clubs from the United States. And that's something we haven't really seen before. And that's definitely got something to do with the fact that Starting with Beckham, we've seen big players from Europe move over there and it's just grown the interest in, in, in the sport. In terms of how popular the sport of football is in the United States at the moment, it's actually only third behind basketball and baseball in terms of, in terms of the, most, um, the most played sport. And in terms of attendance, it's third behind only American football and baseball, which is insane. I think American football, they have huge crowds. They average about 67 thousand per game and baseball is about 28,000 but then uh, football comes next at 21,000 which in, in in terms of football football leagues um, is ninth highest it's ahead of the English championship which might be a surprise to, to a couple of people considering there are some some big teams in the championship at the moment like Leeds and Nottingham Forest who have big stadiums um, but to be ninth is pretty decent um, stadiums in the US are fairly small in comparison to, to certainly to the Premier League. Um, most are between 20 and 30,000. There are a couple that are, are, are much bigger. Atlanta United's is, um, is 47,000 and Seattle Sounders is about 40,000 as well, but the rest are much smaller. So I, I suppose they, they, they may, either they know the, 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 the capacity or they, they've been conservative to, to, to begin with and, they, and, the, and there's planned expansion. Football is going to continue to get more popular in the US. Um, those that follow it in the United States are largely young. And having the World Cup in 1994, I think, was a fantastic way to get um, to get young people at that time into the into the sport. And the fact that they're they're co-hosting it um, along with uh, Canada and Mexico in 2026, so the World Cup after after Qatar. Um, is another fantastic opportunity to reel in a new generation of of uh, of young football fans and i can see from from the amount of time that i spend following twi football on on twitter and on youtube that there are a lot of people in the united states who are very interested in in in, in football and it's great to see it's also the second fastest growing sport in the United States at the moment behind lacrosse. I only see football in the United States getting bigger and getting better. The US is a fantastic sporting nation. You can think of its, um, in, in regards to the, the Olympic Games, it's the most successful country in its history in terms of gold medals and, and, and overall medals. They really produce a, a, a great amount of, of, of uh, top athletes. And that goes for the, for the same of their uh, of their domestic sports as, as well. Their domestic sports are really, really highly thought of. And in terms of the overall value of sports clubs in the world, three of the fi top five most valuable sports clubs are from the United States. And they're from each of the three main sports in the US. It's the Dallas Cowboys, the New York Knicks, and the New York Yankees. So yeah, one from each. Uh, rounding off the top five is, is Barcelona and Real Madrid from Spain. The US, of course, has a huge population and more and more people are getting into, into football. It also has a growing popularity in the US, so there's no reason for the trend to, to stop now. And I think that the country is only going to go from strength to strength in regards to football and that Christian Pulisic is just the start. And we're going to see more players like him going over from the US at a, at a young age, being scouted by, um, by top European clubs and reaching a, a, a level that, uh, that was unprecedented in the past for players from the United States. In years to come, the US will be seriously competitive in the World Cup. Might not necessarily be in the next two World Cups. You would, you would think that, they, that having home advantage um, might have something to do with a, with a better performance in 2026, but certainly further down the line, the way things are going now, I think the only way is up for the US and I could see them becoming a very competitive side in international football.
which for those of us who grew up seeing the US in the 1990s and early 2000s is a it's insane it's mad it's very 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 strange to see but fair play they're going about it the right way thanks for watching Joe's Corner I know Rafe will have his review show up if not by the time I have up posted this video but uh but very shortly after and we'll see you later on in the week for our podcast thanks for watching peace